Hello there. As promised, I am going to put together a video on how to make homemade hummus. So here I have a few ingredients. The main ingredient for hummus is chickpeas, otherwise known as garbanzo beans. And I've been soaking these overnight so they're ready for me to cook them because I will need to cook them prior to uh, processing them. That along with some olive oil and lemon and garlic are your basic ingredients for hummus. We will be adding a little salt. I have sea salt flakes here and pepper to taste. I'm also going to add tahini, which is sesame seed paste. And if you can't find it at your uh, American grocery store, you can often look at an Asian market or an Indian or European market and find this. It's pretty, it's inexpensive. This is a $2.50 jar um, and it's going to add a little flavor and texture to the hummus as well. I was not able to get by the store to get any fresh peppers, but I'll probably add a little cayenne, uh, dried cayenne uh, pepper powder to this mix just to give it some more flavor, give it a little more depth. Um, but you can always add fresh chilies to the food processor as it's going or other flavors uh, to add to your hummus. You don't want to get too crazy with it because you'll kind of overtake the flavor of your legumes, which hummus itself is kind of about the legumes, but you do want it to have some flavor and some depth. So that's okay. Another thing to keep in mind is that when making a bean type paste or spread, it does not necessarily have to be chickpeas, which is, you know, traditional for hummus. You can also use black beans, red beans, cannellini beans, and uh, also um, lentils make a really good spread or paste. So, and you can use a variety of things. Instead of using it, uh, uh, instead of using mayonnaise on your sandwich, you can give a different flavor with hummus or a spread. Um, I really love it in a wrap. A veggie wrap and what I'll do is I'll spread the hummus really thin and add some uh, cabbage from there and some peppers and some other things and wrap it all up and it gives a really really good flavor so there's a variety of things you can do um, with hummus so just look it up easy to find so we're gonna get started I'm gonna get these beans to cooking so that uh, my chickpeas my garbanzo beans I'm gonna get them to cooking so that the next step we will put everything into the food processor and get it all mixed together. It's really simple and easy um, and that's why I wanted to make this video to let you know you don't always have to run out to the store and grab a little tub of hummus and then you can add your own flavors. You can make it to your specific taste and dietary needs. Um, I did go ahead and soak the entire bag of garbanzo beans so I'm going to have quite a bit of hummus which I will be sharing with some family members. Um, but you don't have to make a huge uh, batch. You could soak maybe half of the bag of beans and go from there. So there's different ways to do this, and you can put it away and it will last a little while. So let's get started. So here we have our base ingredients. They're ready. I have the garbanzo beans. They are cooked. And it's really simple. Once you soak them overnight, you'll need to bring them to a boil and then let them simmer for about 30 minutes. Um, they're a fairly soft lentil, so it doesn't take a lot of cooking time. So those are ready. I let them cool slightly. I want to use them warm to hot because it'll uh, produce a better paste uh, when I'm blending them. I'm going to go ahead and go through all the instructions here and then I'm going to stop talking because I'm going to cut the sound out of the video because if you, any of you own one of these guys, you know they, they get pretty loud. So, again, I have the garbanzo beans, also known as chickpeas, about eight cloves of peeled garlic. This is about a tablespoon of sea salt. You can use more to taste. I always find that, you know, you add your base amount. You can always add to, but you can never take away. Once it's in your recipe, you can't get it out. So go on the, you know, the kind of uh, sparse side in adding your seasonings because you can always put more in, but you can't take it away. I decided to, instead of going with spicy, since I am going to be sharing this with some other family members, I'm going to put a little cumin in it to give the uh, flavor, give it some depth in its flavor. 
Here I have three quarters cup of lemon juice. Um, that was about four, four small lemons, small to medium lemons, uh, and a half a cup of olive oil. Calls for eight ounces of your sesame seed paste, tahini, so I'll be using this entire jar. So well, let's go ahead and start putting it together. Also, I may need to do two batches because this is going to be quite a large batch. I don't think that it's all going to fit into um, this blender here. So it's okay. You can put your two batches, do them separately, and then mix it together in a larger bowl to get all of your flavors mixed in. Because, you know, I'll be using approximately half, but it probably won't come out to completely half. One of the things that I did forget to put here on the uh, working area is that I did reserve some of the liquid from cooking the beans. You want to keep you some liquid, probably about a cup or so, uh, because you're going to have some oils and some liquid here, but sometimes it's not enough to get the consistency of the paste that you need. So if you want to, need, if you want to put in additional liquid, I would suggest that you use the uh, liquid that you cooked your beans in because it has the flavor in it. Alrighty, here we go. Like I said, I'm going to put about a half of these beans. Let me grab a big serving, I mean a big spoon. I'm have a big spoon there. I'm going to use the measuring cup to get my beans up. And that will also help me kind of know how many I put in here. They might fit. I don't know. We'll keep going so I get kind of close. If it gets too close to the top, because I do want it to get a really good blend. So, you know, and let's see here. I always take a few of these out because I haven't blended it. So, so, I think it might take it all the way to the top. Yeah, it's going to take it all the way to the top. So, no, we're not going to do that that close because we still have to add in these other things and let it get a good blend. So, I'll do two batches. I do have a food processor. You can do it in a food processor. My food processor is actually smaller than this container, even, um, even smaller than this container. And that's the reason I chose not to use the food processor because um, it's just not going to... It's going to take more work to get that done. So I'm going to toss three, four. That's half of the garlic that I have. And um, tahini will separate... Uh, as it's sitting in the store so you can give it a good shake um, some people will take this out and put it in the food processor so you can process it back together I'm just gonna give it a few stirs here right in the jar and then use about half of it like I said because eventually this is all gonna make one big batch again anyway I'm gonna pull out about half what I think is half and pull some of the liquid from that as well put that back there use about half of my salt About half of the cumin. Half of that olive oil. And I'm just eyeballing this because, again, it's all going to come together again. It's not like, um, you know, it's going to stay separated. And also what I was telling you is really great about um, the hummus making a large batch is that you can freeze it. It only stays good in the refrigerator for about a week. Uh, but you can freeze it, and um, let me put the lid on first before I do this, because this thing will get to go in and have everything. But you can freeze it up to three months, is what I was trying to say there while I was thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started, and we'll have our first batch very shortly. <laughs>
minus about a cup that I ate. That's just, I think it's delicious. That's why. Um, probably, uh, you may want to add more salt. Uh, like I said, I only added about a tablespoon. For some people, that's not going to be enough. For me, it is perfect, and I tell you why. About 28 years ago, I stopped using salt altogether, any additional salt. Cut it out. But then, as I got older and I read more nutritional information, I found that you need some salt in your diet for proper thyroid function. So now I do cook with some salt, but I tend to go with moderate amounts. So for some people, this won't be quite enough. As you can see here, I have it in a glass dish. I'm going to break this down into smaller glass dishes. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do, though, for the ones that I'm going to give away, when I go to the grocery store and I buy things, I keep these little plastic uh, tubs with the lids because, you know, you can give this away. If they want to transfer it out of the plastic themselves later, that's fine. But you don't have to worry about getting this back. You're like, hey, here, got something for you. Great. You know, you can even really wash it up good and peel these stickers off. I, I washed it. It's been washed a couple of times. Sticker's still on there. I don't care. But you could take the sticker off and add your own little homemade sticker and, you know, let them know that you made that special for them. So here it is, your basic hummus recipe. I will be adding notes below. I hope you enjoyed this video.